Thank you so much, Gab. So now we just had three wonderful, two, I'm sorry, two wonderful inspirational messages. A very good start to a very, very good conference. So let's continue on with the very first plenary of the 2022 Flores de Mayo Festival and Conference entitled Floral Traditions in Manila. Wow, what an exciting title, Floral Traditions in Manila. I personally am not super aware yet of the floral traditions that we have here in Manila, although I've been living here for many years. So I'm very, very excited uh, to listen to our speakers for this um, plenary. So, okay, let's start the ball rolling with our first speaker. All right. So our first speaker for today is Professor Celia M. Bonilla. She is with the Department of Arts and Communication, College of Arts and Sciences in UP Manila. She teaches Arts One, a general education college course that ambitiously compresses the scope of literature and art history and courses in the Philippine Arts degree program. She graduated from UP Diliman with degrees in AB Humanities and MA Art History. She is part of the UP Manila Ugnayan ng Pahinungod as Advocacy Committee Chair and is also a member of the UP Manila Research Ethics Board. Her research publications include different dimensions of the Black Nazarene devotion in Quiapo, old buildings and fortifications in Manila, and other pertinent cultural fields. Again, let's all welcome Professor Bonilla. Sorry. <laughs> okay, good morning everyone. Uh, that was a very good speech, no, from Dr. from our Chancellor. And uh, thank you. That was a good uh, way to open things. Okay. Uh, mine is really just giving a, a, a some examples now of floral tradition. Okay, all right. Now this is my <laughs> this is my talk. Okay, uh, Nila then other flora as cultural basis of Manila. Okay, because Manila is said to have come uh, variously you now from Nila or Nilad. Okay, now. This is a work by a friend of mine, no? This is, uh, uh, she titled it Celias Nila or Nila. And this is by Miss Naiso, no? She is a, an artist and I asked her if she would like to be part of uh, Philbas also, okay? So this is a rendition, her very own, and she wanted to, to, um, to just focus on the flower. She usually would have uh, figures, okay? Now, we know that the country is really a uh, uh, well-formed, no? Uh, at the mouth of Pasig, but before that, no? From the Pleistocene era and all that, no? There would be so many cataclysmic forces, no? That had finally formed, no? The, the triangle, no? At the delta, and then here, you have uh, the the one the one um, map, no, that that swayed, no, our claim, no, to the island, no, to the Spratlys, to our favor, no. This is the Murillo Velarde map, no, uh, done by Nicolas Cruz Bagay, and here it shows the the traditions. No, of course, we would like to highlight here our natural tradition being, uh, I mean, the natural heritage as basis of our tradition. Now, maybe cultural, even the toponym itself, now the toponym or the, the basis for the name. Now here, of course, is you have the map, no? the stylized map of Intramuro. And then of course, uh, this is going to be quite you know, a very, an overview, no? How important it is, no? That we know how uh, most of our flora are water-based, okay? And then, as such, now you have the nila or the nilad, no? When they say nila, um, they they are well the the um, the botanists here, no, can can maybe expound on these further, 
but the idea is that uh, they were uh, of endemic uh, endemic origins, no? meaning they are with us. No? Although there were some uh, from Baumgarten, no? it would say that uh, it was really uh, of Sanskrit origin. No? It was of uh, the, the, indi the indigo, no? from natural indigo dye. Okay? And then, of course, you have the Nilad, which is the mangrove. And the mangrove, uh, as you can see with my, you know, with the painting done for me, it, it has the, the, those um, tiny white flowers, okay, uh, at uh, the stem, okay? It's so rich, our biodiversity. I was told once that uh, even as many, way, way back now in the other century, that there would be 20 new species discovered every day here in our country. No, not only, I mean, of course, not Manila anymore, probably, but who knows. But uh, in our country, it's so rich no, in, uh, uh, in all these uh, uh, species, okay? Now, of course, to, to show off na that, no? even uh, uh, Augustinian, Father Blanco, no Manuel Blanco, had come up with his Flora de Filipina, no, in which uh, luckily uh, someone gifted me with with my own set, no, of of um, plates, no, of the Flora de Filipina. Okay, and then just to show you uh, here, no, this is the rendition in Blanco's Flora de Filipina, no. Of course, I, I would. Uh, I was looking for the one of Chiapo. There was no one, nothing of Chiapo. No, now this is the Nila, the mangrove, no, the one on the left. And then while Nila is the natural indigo, said to be of Sanskrit origin, like I said before. No? Okay, this is just an overview. And then of course we have uh, here, no, how it's been noted, no, that uh, my Nila is uh, uh, was really from that um, abundance no, of the nila or the nilad, no? uh, you would see different sources. No? They, would, uh, they would say it's really nila, or, but then they would say it's, it's quite, um, uh, it can be interchanged, nila and nilad, no? or some of the, the Spaniards um, had it backward, no? it's really nila. Uh, but then, of course, no, it uh, would just show the richness of our of our of the species that abound here okay maybe the nilad now is already an evolved uh, species from uh, a comb combination of things that have happened here in our country what with the pollution of course the idea is to survive to survive all these things now that are happening and of course it begs the question my my talk no it begs the question of conservation how do we conserve all these no the the essence of uh, having all these gifts no natural uh, natural heritage would be to conserve them no and here you're seeing uh, uh, DNR secretary Simatu do um, spearheading no the the Nilad festival. They they thought it was going to be a festival, but really a way to conserve it. They they uh, here they are planting the mangrove. You know why well, we we did that before in uh, Indonesia. We planted mangrove. The idea is for you to have the um, the seedling, but it's the bold one. No, it's not that the the smaller one. No, because you're going. The idea is for you to plant it in. Uh, in the water, no? Here, I, I'm just wondering, maybe the mangrove that we have here is a little, I don't know, maybe this is the species that would, um, that would adapt well, no? This is in Baseco, so you can imagine the Baseco area, and then there's one in, uh, in the, near the CCP, no? Uh, and then farther down uh, the, the, what is the bay walk area okay and then of course uh here's the they had bold it no bold it's uh 
so as to, to be able to make it, uh, it's already partly grown and that uh, we have to nurture it as it is with culture, as it is the, you know, the essence of culture, the, the core of culture is full meaning to, to take care. No? So that is what we are called to do, not to take care of our natural heritage and of course the built heritage. And then the traditions, the traditions are the intangible ones, no? the ones that are uh, being, um, being lived no? by the people and evolved through time, no? through all our oral traditions. Here, I'm, I'm showing you another, uh, uh, another species. No? This is the Quiapo, no? another toponym no? of Quiapo. I mean, uh, this is the basis for the, word, the, the name Quiapo. No? Yung Quiapo is water cabbage, or as Nick Joaquin would have it, you have the, the uh, Cuyapo. Okay? And here in Quiapo is the local no? for the uh, basilica. No, of the it was initially uh, dedicated to Saint John the Baptist. No, and now it's the minor basilica of the Black Nazarene. No, now interestingly, we have uh, already imbibed no and inculturated no the the Christian religion no made uh, imposed upon us by the Spaniards because it's such a lively way of uh, of. Um, Picking up you know, something so foreign that uh, post-colonially we were, we were able to make it our own, you know, to make it our own, to give it our own blend because it really makes sense for us. That's the idea of making it our own. We make it relevant. Okay. Now here, of course, you have the, the Patron, no, which is from Mexico, uh, 1606, no, 1607, earlier brought in no, by the uh, Augustinian Recollect. Okay. But, um, and then of course the festival would also include, maybe not anymore bringing along Quiapo, uh, the plant, no? But uh, the, the very essence of Quiapo meaning is, uh, well, Quiapo is one of the extramuros churches, no? So it's beyond the walls, no? Uh, I showed you earlier the, you know, the, the intramuros no? within the walls, no? But this one is beyond it, okay? Because uh, outside of it, you had really uh, uh, the expansion, no? It's not like the Spaniards had left out, no? What's outside of the walls, no? In fact, they kept pushing back the boundaries of what we know to be our country, no? For them, anyway, we know that this is our country, no? But for them, they kept exploring and colonizing, no? And then, of course, uh, part of the colonizing would also be introducing new species. No, and that is uh, why we are now looking at a very dynamic blend no, of what is colonial, what has been imposed, and what is native as well, or what has grown in our country itself, no, endemic and natural to our country. Okay, now here I'm, uh, and then here, of course, now you're familiar with this, no, pandan is another another plant no that is another species no and then of course we celebrate it no with uh with the uh, nuestra senora de guia whose iconography would find her in the on the pandan leaves no that's the pandan leaves uh under her because she was found in the um, well it, it must have been something like 17 1572 no when legacy came here that was when they found the uh, some soldiers, no, maybe may uh, walking along the beach, no. They found this very beautiful, this this, uh, this uh, bear, no, anito-looking stub of a of a uh, of a um, of an image, no, being worshipped according to them, no, by the natives. And then they they realized it must have been a prow, no, from the ship. And then because it's a little like that, no, it is not a completely grass, and it's the hands do not uh, are not in the uh, prayer pose completely, no, as um, as we would do. But it's like that, no. It's a little more oriental, no. Then they are thinking it must have come from the Portuguese, no, because the Portuguese we're really on the Portuguese side, no, of the 
Alexander the Sixth, uh, ano parang uh, line no of uh, division between the Spaniards and the, the Portuguese. Okay. Now here, of course, uh, we are. Uh, I, I suppose we will be having another talk, no, on on the beautiful traditions that we have in terms of uh, the devotion we have for the Nuestra Señora de Guía, which is of course the oldest, the oldest. Uh, icon we have uh, the uh, the oldest image we have of the blessed virgin mary okay now this is her no uh it's a little they, they would even say it's it's a bit more like guan yin no of course for the chinese they've already all enculturated that no uh it's already 1572 by that time the portuguese have already established their ports no somewhere in macau no like that okay so it's the interesting how we are making it our own. Okay, so at this point, no, maybe uh, we can scale back, no, for more projects, no, in order to to enrich our our culture, no, with with what we find uh, in history, and then of course the idea is that we learn history correctly, no, uh, no revisionism, and then of course. It's really beautiful that we are, uh, it's only when I was made to do this paper that I found out there, they, they were uh, doing a replanting no, of the Nilad, which I find better than having Dolomite no, in, in some places. No? It's, it's, it's really a lot better. No? So at this point, no, uh, we will, uh, uh, this ends my talk, no? and it's really a good bat no, for our awareness. No, so awareness as well as um, as love. No, yes, we have to call it the love of place, the pride of place. No, as um, we find it interesting. No, what uh, even Manila, 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 my Manila by Nick Joaquin has always um, re recalled. No, the the prehistory of the Philippines. No, how all the cataclysms led no, to this beautiful crafting by nature of our of our islands no especially manila no? that's why he titled his book manila my manila so at this point uh, I, I thank you for your kind attention no? i'm turning you back over to our uh to our organizers thank you All right. Thank you so much, Professor Bonilla, for sharing valuable information about the culture of flora and religion and in relate to today's event. Yes, thank you so much, Paula Bonilla Gabe. I didn't know na kiapo, the, the word kiapo came from a plant. And of course, I already know that uh, my Nila, Nila, you know, just amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paula Bonilla. So actually, um, for our next speaker, she's already here with us today, we have Ms. Marinal Completo. So she is a fourth-year student taking up BA Philippine Arts in the University of the Philippines, Manila. In her years of being a student leader in school and within and outside her community, she was awarded the Jerry Rojas Leadership Award in 2016, the National Discipline Award by the AY Foundation, and the Isabellan of the Year Award in 2018. At present, she is the elected Santo de Anca Bataan Chairperson or SK Chairperson of Barangay 669 in Arvita, Manila. And she belongs to the Council of the Santo de Anca Bataan Federation of the whole city of Manila, where she is elected as the Public Relations Officer. She is also a current member of the Rotary Club of Manila Tourist Belt and was club president of the, Rotary, of the Rotary Club of Manila Robinson in 2019-2020. As a true-blooded Ermitense, she's the reigning Mutya ng Ermita since 2015, which made her the Capitana of the Bota Flora celebration of the Archdiocesan Shrine of the Nuestra Senora de Guia in 2016. So here we have um, an scholar ng bayan, a beauty queen, and also a leader. Let's give it up for Miss Completo and let's give her the warmest welcome.
There you go. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction, Therese. So first and foremost, I would like to greet everyone, our distinguished guests and speakers, professors, fellow students, and everyone who made time to attend this conference. A very beautiful floral day to all. Once again, I am Marinelle Completo, a fourth year BA Philippine Arts student at the University of the Philippines, Manila. And I would just like to say that this is such an honor to be a part of this colloquium. And I cannot wait to walk you through the narratives of the lurking beautiful floral tradition in the historic and cultural district of the country's capital, Ermita in Manila. Now, for those of you who doesn't know about the district of Ermita or hasn't been to Ermita or has been to Ermita, let me introduce and reintroduce you, Ermita. Well, Ermita is a commercial compact district located in the central part of the capital city of the country, Manila. And it is in fact a prominent, as some of you may know, since it serves as the core of the metro as it is where it situates the significant centers of the country, such as in finance, education, culture, and commerce. Over and above that, um, private and government offices, museums, and universities also thrive in Ermita. More so, it is home to the famous tourist attractions and landmarks of the country, notably the famous Rizal Park, the premier national park of the Philippines. Well, the district is also, you know, somewhat very bustling. So if you know or have been to Rojas Boulevard, where you can see an overlooking of the sunset in Manila Bay, or the crowded and buzzing Taft Avenue, then defi definitely or probably you may have already crossed the streets of Ermita. But you know, despite being one of the most urbanized districts in the metro, who would have thought that beneath these high-rising buildings, busy streets, and all the buzzing noise of the city, there lurks a culturally rich floral tradition that has long been observed since the early 1900s, and that is the Bota Flores tradition. So the Bota Flores tradition is celebrated on the feast of the icon of Ermita, Nuestra Señora de Guilla, as also introduced to us by Professor Bonilla, which is also the oldest existing Marian image in the Philippines. So it is really a pride of Ermita and its tradition as well. So the Bata Flores is celebrated, as I, as I mentioned, on the Feast of Nuestra Señora de Guilla, and it has been recognized as one of the longest observed devotions of the Ermitenses of the community of Ermita. It is actually attributed as a special accolade to Nuestra Señora de Guilla. So this specific image can be um, found in Ermita as well, in the Archdiocese and Shrine of Nuestra Señora de Guilla, the structure you can see in the image presented. So there it houses the image and where the floral tradition is being exhibited apart from it being flaunted within the streets of Ermita. So um, initially, initially the image received a feast day on December 18th. That is the feast of the expectation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. But it was later on transferred to May 19, the date of the finding of the said image in 1571. Thus, um, the said tradition is also celebrated during this time every year of the 19th of May. So can you just imagine how the image and the floral tradition has long been observed even before the country was named and Manila was formed before it was formally celebrated in the 1900s. So with that, the said tradition is considered to be one of the most significant devotions in honor of the image of Nuestra Señora de Guía and in the community of Ermita. So in this particular tradition, um, there are singing of songs for the Virgin, dancing, the reenactment of the finding of the image, um, a floral procession, and most importantly, the showering of native wildflowers for the image by the Capitana is being held. In addition, a loa, um, spelled as L-O-A, or a poem of praise or prayer is also being delivered by the Capitana as a sign of admiration to the image. And afterwards, a floral offering by its devotees concludes the ceremony. But 
I will give more specific details to that in the latter part of the discussion. So another fun fact, um, I guess it was also mentioned by um, Professor Bonilla, but this tradition rooted way before the Spanish discovery of the image when the Filipino natives used to worship the image the same way of singing, dancing, and showering of flowers to the said image they perceived. Now, why is this account really important? So, well, since according to the history of the finding of the image, when a soldier of Miguel Lopez de Legazpi found the image along the shores of Ermita, when it was just all sea or all ocean here in Ermita before it was a commercial district that we know now, they saw these native Filipinos worshiping the said image as if it was a pagan image. They were doing such worship through the forms of, as I said a while ago, singing, dancing, and most importantly, the strewing of wildflowers to the image, which was then surrounded, uh, which was then described to be surrounded by pandan leaves. So imagine the antiquity of the showering of, showering of flowers tradition and how it was remarkably retained to be done up to now. So centuries later though, back in the mid 20th century, um, the bot of Flores was, was originally used as a sign of protest to the Archbishop of Manila in a petition to permanently return the image of Nuestra Señora de Guía to its first and real home in Ermita. So yes, you heard it right. Um, even though it is an Ermita icon, um, it housed several years, even a hundred years since, it find, since its finding, first in Manila Cathedral. So during this time of protest, the tossing of flowers led by the Capitana before the cathedral was part of the indication of dissent. So the so-called Capitana uh, initially tossed flowers all over the cathedral nonstop as if they were messing the surroundings of the cathedral to sort of like displease the archbishop. And um, it actually really displeased the archbishop which granted them the petition. So these are all done just for the image to be re returned to Ermita. And fortunate, fortunately, um, it was granted by Archbishop Michael J. Odoherty, the Manila Cathedral Rector and the Prelate Archbishop of Manila in 1918. So since 1918, it was originally transferred or it went back home, back to its original home in Ermita Church to where we are seeing it now. So after which the tossing of flowers um, um, this tradition later on developed as a reverence of, for the Virgin and grew into one of the most anticipated traditions being exhibited every year on our feast day celebration, celebration, which is being done up to this day and actually will be done this coming 19th of May. So if you are interested to come um, and you want to witness it personally, you are welcome to see it and see it for yourself. So this is an image of the Capitana back in 2021 as she is, she is about to conduct the flower tossing ceremony to the image of the Nuestra Señora de Guía. So at this juncture, you may wonder why am I the chosen person to present this to you or what is my involvement in this celebration? Well, to answer this question, it is because I was once the chosen Capitana in the Bota Flores celebration back in the year 2016. So if you, if you may have noticed in my earlier discussions, I have mentioned the Capitana um, name a couple of times and its significant role in the celebration. But to give you more, to give you a more detailed explanation as to what or who is a Capitana in this floral tradition is, the Capitana is um, actually chosen every year to spearhead the fiesta celebration, most significantly the Bota Flores or the flower tossing ceremony. She is selected by the parish pastoral council from the church upon deliver deliberation from a set of candidates. So the criteria to be uh, a capitana or for choosing the capitana before was a little girl of around four to nine years old. For the time being, though, her mother, for the time being, her mother or guardian will represent the year's hermana mayor. Though through time, the chosen capitana's age was adjusted to one who is 13 years and above, so one who reached the age of reason due to the fact that the selected capitana has to know her significance and duty 
as a role model for other young women to emulate. So this is because the Capitana is recognized to be a woman who would represent the women of Ermita and the women of the image de Guia. So it was actually believed that if you were chosen to be the Capitana, it was Ver, Ver de Guia herself who personally chose you. So um, even though there is a voting, um, it was fate that brought um, the Capitana to that title, to that certain person, to that Capitana title. So indeed, there is a privilege to be a Capitana and it is a great honor by the young women of Ermita coexisting with the responsibility of being a woman worth it to be taken as a good example. So the first ever Capitana was Patria Hill in 1916. Um, unfortunately, I do not have an image of her, but here are um, images of me back when I was Capitana in 2016. So there you go. Um, unfortunately, I don't have much picture and I don't know why, but um, um, here is the Bot of Flores um, celebration in 2018 when I, when I was also invited once again to be part of the um, Bot of Flores celebration, but not as a Capitana, but um, a delegate for the Santa Cruz and or the Sagala. So now, apart from the flower tossing ceremony that the Capitana should lead, as I said earlier, she's also tasked to recite the Loa, a prayer poem offered for the Digiya. So this is an example of a Capitana back then reciting the Loa. So aside from the Capitana though, I have also mentioned that a certain Hermana Mayor has a role in this floral tradition. So who is the Hermana Mayor? So the Hermana Mayor is also appointed every year by the Parish Pastoral Council. And she has to be a parishioner or devotee of the image, whether past or present who is willing to shoulder the responsibility of at least compensating or sponsoring the expenses of the Bot of Flores celebration and its preparations. Although before, it used to be the mother or guardian of the year's Capitana. Um, she usually accompanies the Capitana in the flower tossing ceremony and the responsibility of compensating the events preparation are no longer um, applicable or no longer required in today's time. Moving forward, um, let us now delve into the specifics of the Bota Flora celebration and what is really happening in this specific floral event. So as an opening of the traditional celebration on the 19th of May, a floral offering by 6.20 in the morning is being done for the Virgin. So it is um, led by the parish priest and it is succeeded by a prayer, an incensation, and another floral offering of the Hermana Mayor at 6.30 in the morning, all happening in the Nuestra Señora de Guia Plaza, just in front of the church, where there is also a large structure of the said image in the said plaza. Then, by 4, four o'clock in the afternoon, which is the highlight of the fiesta, the Bota Flores celebration embarks with the reenactment of the finding of the image and the return of the image in Ermita from Manila Cathedral by a group of performers within the church. This is also where the caracol happens, but the caracol only started way um, four years ago. So it was just a, a preliminary tradition in as a part of the Bota Flores tradition. So a procession commonly known as Sagala or Santa Cruzan will follow. Um, it is being done along the streets of the vicinity of Ermita, but only within the bounds of Zone 72. So that's Barangay 666 to Barangay 670. And that is also just the compound of the church. So here, a parade of little girls and young women with their escorts from the five barangays of Zone 72, Ermita, are dressed in um, grand gowns with their towering floral arches placed above them as they promenade their way back to Ermita Church. So this is just like um, um, the reinventing of the usual Santa Cruzan here in the Philippines, but um, with an addition of the Bota Flores, with just the addition for the Bota Flores celebration. So here are more pictures of the flora procession. So um, it usually starts at 4, 4 p.m. but ends around 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. depending on the um, 
the 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 length of the streets to be roamed around by the procession or to be covered by the uh, floral procession. So they are usually led by the Kapindana and the image of the Nuestra Señora de Guía in a beautifully adorned carroza. So um, the usually the last one in line is the um, image of the Nuestra Señora de Guía. So devotees, parishioners, and the Ermita community are enjoined in this procession as they are accompanied by a marching band. So the procession of Bota Flores is actually distinctly naval in theme. So usually the little boys who march in the procession are in sailor suits. But now the seamen of Ermita who are turned devotees of the image becomes the guard of honor of the image, recalling the days when the galleon crew and men from the Spanish Royal Navy performed the service and their sign of devotion as well for the um, continuing guidance of the image in their sail to the sea. So this seamen actually, um, some of them resides within the compound of Ermita Church, and some of them really are not, are not from Ermita, but they are returning residents or returning tenants of Ermita as seamen as um, they believe that it was um, Nuestra Señora de Guía who guided them um, throughout their um, sailing through the seas. So at times, um, the parade pauses at the place of re residence of the Capitana, and there the flower tossing ceremony for the Virgin takes place together with the Hermana Mayor. And um, during my term as the Capitana, we pause in our barangay at, barang at the Barangay 669 Hall, and this is where I, con uh, I conducted the flower tossing ceremony. So while well, preparations were also done during, during um, that time for our part as Capitana, since we have to prepare and decorate a stage in front of the Barangay Hall to reach the image in, flower, in the flower tossing event. So, um, and also um, I need to memorize the prayer poem called Loa, which invariably follows in the same spot. But um, in my case, I presented it inside the church. So this is the um, prepared stage with floral um, adornments um, for the flower tossing ceremony or the Bota Flores celebration. And here is an image of the flower tossing ceremony inside the church or within the vicinity of the church where this Bota Flores happened in the year, um, in the recent year 2021. And um, the LOA was also conducted in that same spot. So upon the arrival naman of the image back to the church, a solemn entrance of the image is enacted and another flower tossing ceremony is being done, but now by the devotees and the faithful. So this is also called the Maringal na Pagpasok sa Simbahan, a very grandeur floral tradition mostly practiced by its devotees. And usually right after, um, a lot of devotees would catch their breath um, just to have a piece of a rose or a stem of a flower from the uh, from the image. So the Misa Mayor or uh, Eucharistic celebration begins afterwards, usually presided and attended by church dignitaries, which is also the culmination of the celebration. So the, the, the devotees can then again line up after the Misa Mayor to offer them their personal flowers for the image, or it can be a bouquet usually. Um, and the feast closes with a uh, salo-salo or a small celebration for the participants of the said event. So indeed, it, was, it has always been a festive celebration filled with flowers all over the vicinity of the church, particularly flower petals. It was quite messy as you, may have, as you can observe, but this is just how florals and the devotion to the image strengthens the culture and community involvement of the people of Ermita. And to belong to the list of capitanas of this floral tradition dating since 1918, it is such a heartwarming and um, remarkable honor and experience that I, as a born and raised Ermitense, will forever treasure. So to end this presentation, I would like to share this quotation by Claire Ansberry, saying that flowers have a way of bringing people together, drawing them from their homes, 
And for the people of Vernita, their floral tradition just happens to be that binding hope every year that makes them come out of their homes and come together to celebrate the festivity of their rich history and culture. And that concludes my presentation on the Bota Flora celebration of Ernita. I hope that I was able to shed light into this beautiful floral tradition in the heart of this bustling district. So thank you so much once again and a wonderful floral day once again. Thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you so much, Ms. Completa, for your talk. Um, honestly, like this is my first time hearing about the Bata Flores, and I'm so excited to maybe visit Ermita this coming May 19th to really see it for myself. So yes, again, thank you, thank you so much, Ms. Completa. Yeah, I also feel the same. I also wanted to go, but due to the uh, limitations, but Still, I am enlightened with the history of Ermita since I'm not much of a Malineño myself. So thank you very much. Now we uh, move on to our next speaker. Uh, we again have Dr. Honey Libertine Achanzar Labor. Dr. Honey Libertine Achanzar Labor is, a, is Professor 5 at the University of the Philippines, Manila, where she teaches Arts 1 and courses in the Philippine Arts, Cultural Heritage, and Arts Management. She was named University Artist through the Arts Productivity Program of the University of the Philippines System, acknowledging her contribution in creative research, publication, and promotion of cultural heritage. She is also a UP Centennial and one UP Professorial Chair Awardee. She graduated from UP Diliman with degrees in BA Humanities, Pre-Med, and MA, PhD, Philippine Studies using anthropology of art as primary approach in research. Her research interests include Southeast Asian art, anthropology of art, and medical anthropology. Her most recent publications include a chapter in the Scopus Index book, Religious Tourism in Asia, Tradition and Change Through Case Studies, Oxford Cabby 2018, and journal articles titled Calia Faura, Cultural Heritage Amidst Conflict in Ermita, Manila. In the Calle Faro Journal 2017, 7 to 9, ISBN 2599242298. And uh, Ibaloy of Benguet as Active Agents in Health Negotiations. In Philippine Journal of Health Research and Development 2018. She is the founder and executive director of the Faro Project. And as a response to the Marawi siege, she convened the first The Faro Project Conference, The Lost and the Retrieved, Cultural Heritage Amidst Conflict in 2017 and the celebration of the annual Flores de Mayo Sakali Faro Festivals. Again, let's welcome the ever-talented Dr. Achanzar Labor. Right. Um, good day to all. Magandang araw po sa lahat. Balik sa kahalamanan, Flora as ground in cultural heritage conservation. So the convener of the annual Flores de Mayo festivals, the Faura Project, was formed by a group of heritage advocates, mostly members of the faculty, students, and alumni of the BA Philippine Arts, Cultural Heritage and Arts Management Program of the University of the Philippines, Manila, who share the same advocacy not to address the stretch of Padre Faro Street and its environs as heritage zone. So the group began by mapping heritage trails on the designated zone and conducting this for targeted groups of varying profiles. So then professors, alumni, and students were engaged to join in our advocacy as heritage trail guides or moderators. Consultation with architects and heritage conservators were regularly done, and so with local government officials. So we see here the foremost heritage conservator, architect Gerard Lico, um, 
checking out uh, the result hall of, of UP Manada. And on the next page is uh, during our 2015 Power of Project Conference on Heritage. We see that one of the of our um, participants, well, our keynote guest no, was uh, then Vice Mayor Isco Moreno, who is now our incumbent mayor in Manila. So street heritage advocates from other communities, some from the Philippines and also later from abroad, were invited as well to share their experience in heritage conservation or in promoting heritage in their communities. Best practices are viewed as significant learning tools. So for um, Cali Colon, we had uh, uh, Mr. Dino Guerrero, no? um, who's part of the local government in, um, in Cebu. And um, for, and yes, on the right, rightmost poster, we see a uh, uh, this uh, speaker, uh, uh, Philippine Arts, Cultural Heritage, and Arts Management uh, alumna, Ms. Ethel, Dr. Ethel Villafranca, who is now the curator and exhibitions manager at the Chinese Museum in Melbourne, Australia. At the center is also an alumna, uh, Ms. Ella de los Santos, who is now the visitor experience lead in Poke Ariti, uh, the center of uh, Maui heritage you know, in New Plymouth, New Zealand. And on the left, we have the, uh, Mr. Vito Hernandez, you know, who spoke about Adelaide and uh, the scenario of, uh, of some of the aborigines you know, in the area in relation to how um, or to the heritage management. Uh, and for urban planning uh, in, in Adelaide, South Australia. But with the change in the start of academic year, sorry, as discussed earlier during the welcome address, the month of May now falls during the regular second term or semester, thereby affecting the regular conduct of the, reg of the traditional Flores de Mayo, an important intangible cultural heritage in the Philippines. Thus, the FAURA project's Flores de Mayo Festival was conceived a perfect platform for promoting and conserving both the intangible cultural heritage of the Flores de Mayo and the use of endemic or native flora in the month of May. So the first Flores de Mayo Festival and conference took place in 2018. Its theme, Endemic Flowers in the Philippines, advocated the conservation of native flowers and disseminated the harm that non-endemic plants give to the environment as they hinder the growth of native plants. It opened with a parade of endemic flowers, some freshly cut, while some beautifully painted on banners held by the participants. So the parade of flowers began at the Rizal Hall of the University of the Philippines, Manila, along Padre Fara Street, then around the campus, and ended at the UP Manila Museum of a History of Ideas with the opening of an exhibit, Pagsibol, or Growth, an art exhibit on the theme of endemic flowers. So art talks and uh, workshops accompany the week-long exhibit. So, and all these were covered by media, including CNN Philippines, which broadcasted the event on national TV. So the first Flores de Mayo Festival of the Faura Project became an annual event and eventually taken as its flagship project. Consequent heritage programs were imbued and accompanied now with the call to propagate and conserve local flora, or balik sang kahalamanan, a return to local flora, and not only in the month of May. So spread out during the year, the year are webinars and community skills training programs promoting sustainability and livelihood, which brings us now to our Empowered Women, Empowered Ermita project, our way of acknowledging that the locals in the community are culture bearers and repository of memory. Thus, any support given to them is a step towards heritage conservation with the support and collaboration of Barangay 
669 loophole officials headed by Barangay Chairperson Cynthia Loriente at the center of the uh, lower leftmost picture huh, on the screen. And Sangguniang uh, Kabataan Chairperson Marinel Completo, leftmost in the picture. The FAUR project is now conducting a continuing program for the underserved women in the district, crocheting art, heritage, and livelihood. Each meeting in the training program is an occasion to disseminate the importance of heritage through talks or lectures, but also through crafts themselves, as all projects are made to bear the semblance or the sign of an endemic flower, starting with that of the Nilag plant. So before I show a four minute video of the launch of the said project, um, let me end the presentation now by um, with, my, with my concluding um, um, line. Huh? So the conservation and promotion of local heritage increase the pride of place of the people in the community. But grounding the call for heritage conservation on Balik Sangkahalamanan leads one to demand an ecology wherein what is natural and appropriate for the environment is what is necessary and that any undertaking related to this is worth its while. In fact, it is essential in the healing of a total person as it nourishes pagpapahalaga, value, and self-worth. It is in this context that Balik Sangkahalamanan is viewed as a developmental symbol of validation. So thank you for listening, and I, I hope you enjoy the video. It's a needed uh, flower on the left, on the upper left-hand corner.
Okay, so thank you for listening or thank you for watching. Wow, okay, what a very powerful start for our Flores de Mayo Festival 2022. Thank you, thank you so much to our, speak to our speakers. That was indeed a very enlightening set of talks, and I for sure learned a lot, so I'm hoping everyone did too. Yes, and I think that everybody has learned a lot and would like to learn more. So for this portion of the program the floor is open for any questions you have for our speakers uh, so i guess for now you may send in your questions through the zoom chat or you can opt to raise your hand and then we will call you so that we can unmute you and you can ask your question yourself but for now we actually already have uh, two questions for our speakers so the first question that we have is for Professor Bonilla. So Professor Bonilla, if you're still here, um, what could be the possible factors for why the Nilad plant was used to name Manila aside from it being abundant during the Spanish colonization? Would you mind repeating the question, please? Yes, okay, sure. So, for Professor Bonilla, what could be the possible factors why the Nilad plant was used to name Manila, aside from it being abundant during the Spanish colonization? Well, uh, you know, so many uh, uh, stories no, abound no, that they say that it was there even, that it was named even before the Spanish uh, conquistadores came, no? They're saying because there have always been Nilads in that area, they would uh, affix you know, the prefix my, not to say in a my Nila, that it has become the top onim you know, for Manila. As well as uh, when the Spanish conquistadors came, you know, they cemented it in, in more ways than one by, by really putting it in the books, you know, in the chronicles, you know, how it is. Uh, uh, the the abundance of milad would be would be the you know, the basis for calling it uh, such you no know, my nila my nilad now whether it's a typographical error on their part you now that they added the that they dropped the a you no know, because uh, of uh, some uh, cultural mispronouncement mispronunciation uh, it could it's, uh, I mean, it's uh, there for people to also conjecture, okay? And then also there are two, you know, that, like what I presented earlier. They were probably two species, no? the Nila and the Nilad. The Nila would be the one that has the dye, no? the indigo, dye, natural dye, which is from uh, India, eventually found its way here as well as the nilad you now where you have the mangrove and the mangrove is the one being replanted now uh, bold as they are and they are uh, parang set in you know in uh, along the shore you know baseco and uh, um, closer to the bay walk and then farther down in ccp area you now in order to to help uh, stem also you know, the the I know the the way uh, the land you know, would be like uh, you know the way the Dolomites you know, would go back to sea you no know, they could not do that in that area because it's so uh, it's already been disturbed you know but it has to be somewhere like in Baseco even if there's so many trash they managed to clear it you no know? and then I. Uh, they, they had bridges no, along the way, no? and uh, they were able to, to do the planting no? uh, on, on solid ground, more or less. No? Maybe loamy. I would think it's loamy. No? Because when we did that in, uh, in Indonesia, like I said, we were really in our rush guards no? and then putting the seed, the, uh, no, the big uh, 
Oh, well, it's the uh, ano, it's the uh, practical. Well, it's a seedling, no, but it's quite tall now. By the time we embedded it in the sea, and you really have to like dive, no, into the sea in order to put it there. And my, I you know, my uh, challenge is for people to to help, no, in the preservation, no, and conservation of the nilad, no, because it's mangrove. Now, mangrove is something that helps in preventing. The, I know the dispersal no, of, uh, of so many resources. No, mangrove is also the the I know the nursery of fish. No, so we can help them. No, uh, it uh, produces oxygen. No, and help in stemming. No, the the erosion of the earth. Okay, so yon. And then maybe my challenge for students is also to start looking for other. Species, no endemic species, in which they would find also that the those species to be the basis of the name of the place where where it's found. No, somehow, no, de ba? It's a good discovery, also, no. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I thank you, thank one, you. No? Yes, yes, you definitely did. Thank you so much for Professor Bonilla. So yes, let's heed the call of Professor Bonilla to help preserve and conserve the 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 Nilad plant, and also to our student scientists here, or to our scientists here. Yes, let's help. Um, you know, look for these endemic plants. We can also um use to you know represent the places that we found them in. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Yes, okay, nice. thank you so thank much, you. Professor Bonilla. You're welcome. Okay. So I think we have another question from our guests, um, Gab. All right, let me read the question. This is directed to Miss Marinelle. Okay, so the question is: How did Ermita celebrate the Bota Flores during the pandemic? Okay. So um, on the advent of the pandemic, back in the year 2020, unfortunately, there was no Bota Flores celebration during that time. But there was just a, um, a I think a, uh, a, like a car parade. Like the, the image was um, placed in a car and then it was adorned with florals, the, the car itself. Um, and it roamed around the streets of Ermita, but that was just it. But um, back in the year, I mean, back um, in the year 2021, um, the tradition was, um, the, the tradition returned. So there was a Capitana once again, and the practice of their Mana Mayor in the flower tossing event um, came back again, um, which also you saw in the pictures um, I used in my presentation. So. Um, even though with the limitation of people coming um, within the church or inside the church during the Bota Flores celebration, the fiesta, I mean the event still um, um, happened despite the, the crisis. So they, they really um, strive to make it happen even though there was still a pandemic. So. Um, Though, fortunately, this year, 2022, everything is slowly going back to normal from its Karakol tradition to its um, reenactment of the finding of the image and the return of the image, actually. And they will also be reenacting the canonical coronation of the image as well during uh, I, this upcoming May 19. So, um, definitely, they are really going back to the normal um, tradition of doing the Bota Flores celebration. But back in 2020, um, there was really none. There was no Capitana and no Hermana Mayor. But in 2021, it was um, um, returned or it was it came back. Right. Thank you, Miss Marinel. And uh, yeah, it was a compromise that the beautiful celebration had its limits. But based from your presentation and the uh, uh, following years, the celebration is blooming again. So thank you uh, for answering that question. Miss Marinel, and bet mo naman kami na mga taga Manila dito to the Bota Flores celebration this May 19. Yes, actually, um, as I mentioned earlier, you are all welcome if you wanted 
if you want to witness the Bota Flores celebration personally this coming May 19 Thursday um they will also be actually going to Manila Cathedral to um reenact the return of the image from Manila Cathedral to Ermita which is a I, I think one time I mean another tradition to look forward to in the upcoming Bota Flores celebration so um, you must you can join if you want uh, um, it starts I think um, the celebration in the afternoon um, the Archdiocese and Shrine of Nossa Senhora Facebook um, Nossa Senhora Diga Facebook page has updated its um, time um, its schedules for the said activities naman. so you can check it out if you want to so I hope to see you there for everyone or for other people who are interested to join. So that's all. Thank you, thank you so much, Ms. Kompleta. Okay, so we have another question. I think this is our last question um, for this session. So this question is for Professor um, Achinzar Labor. So for Professor Achinzar Labor, your crocheting project is nice and well-intentioned. Props to the team and congrats for making this happen. However, I would just like to ask how you plan to sustain this activity in order to continuously support the ladies of Ermita. Yes, uh, this is the reason why from the very start, we saw that it was something that we had to uh, uh, to do in collaboration with the, with the local barangay. You know? So we have, uh, we have a memorandum of, of agreement. No? We actually had a MOA with the Barangay 669 us and uh, we are also most grateful uh, as Marimel mentioned earlier no, she did mention that she is part of the Rotary group and uh, so is with the Barangay chairperson uh, uh, Cynthia Lauriente and um, we have also vouched to help us uh, fund some of the activities so it's actually a collaboration of uh, many groups um, uh, the barangay, uh, the, pub, uh, the private group of the Rotary, and of course the Fowler Project's um, directives no, as to how to ensure that heritage will always be incorporated in, in the need to, to uh, um, heighten sustainability and uh, to increase uh, livelihood and uh, stability for the underserved women of um, yeah of Ermita starting with this barangay no? so um, hopefully uh, we even actually hope that this will just be our pilot project uh, and that this will be this will continue and more than anything our dream is um, not limited to the crochet project now because we know from uh, this was supposed to be part of my longer talk if my laptop did not get lost <laughs> yeah you, you know i'm uh, sorry if, if my my laptop last week didn't crash <laughs> it was meant to be with my paper but thank you for your question that i get to tell you this that um i'm sure many of you have uh, have heard um one of the lectures or paper presentation of uh, dr luisa kamagay no? a renowned filipino historian who has shared with us several archival documents which, uh, which indicate or which show that Ermita uh, and Malate were the center of embroidery in the late 19th century Philippines. No? And this is something what, that we would like to revive no? in the Ermita area. And, this, and we are so happy that uh, Barangay Chairperson Llorente um, are really very much supportive of this and in fact have vouched to actually uh, purchase uh, sewing machines no? <laughs> for the women of, of Ermita and to find the location for this. So, because it is even though, uh, so of course, this embroidery in order for this embroidered um, and crocheted projects to really be sustainable and to be uh, to be um, something that, that would interest sales or to be marketable, not to be marketable. The the edges has to be sewn, and some areas also have to be sewn. But of course, the idea there is to really. Um, yes, not to uh, engage these women to undergo uh, to carry out um, actual handicraft, not the the, this, the the tradition or the practice of this cultural heritage practice of a uh, pagbuburda or embroidery. So I, I hope I answered your question, Sha. Yes.
Yes, you did. But thank you so much, Professor Ashenzar Labor. And again, thank you so much to Miss Completo and Professor Bernilia for also answering the other question. So actually, that ends our Q&A portion. So again, thank you so much to our audience for actively participating. And to our speakers, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. But before we proceed with the next segment, we at the Fora Project would like to show our appreciation to our speakers through these certificates of appreciation. So allow me to read the citation. Next slide, please. Yan, okay. So the Forest Project Incorporated with the Philippine Botanical Arts Society and the University of the Philippines, Manila, present the Certificate of Appreciation to Celia Bonilla for speaking on Milad as cultural basis of Manila, to Ms. Marina Completo for speaking on Flores de Mayo and Ermita, Manila and Autoethnography, and to Dr. Honey Libertine Achinzar Labor for speaking on Balik Sang Kahalamanan, Flora as Ground in Cultural Heritage Conservation, given the 2nd May of 2022 during the conference plenary on floral traditions in Manila during the 2022 International Flores de Mayo Festival and Conference, signed by Professor Alice Adeva, the chair of the DAC CAS UP Manila, and Ms. Rila Famoso Takan, the president of the Philippine Botanical Arts Society. So yes, again, thank you. Thank you so much to our speakers. But before we formally end, promise last now, uh, can you please ask the speakers to turn on their cameras so that we can take a quick picture? Yes, so uh, Ms. Completa and Ms. Um, Professor Bonilla, if you can also turn on your cameras. Uh, Professor Vanilla, yon. Okay, okay, let me just spotlight you. All right. Um. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Go 